Oh, yeah. So this is our first. Uh, this is yesterday was prototype zero. Today is uh, possibly the first part. <laughs> part one to <laughs> prototype uh, number one. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, usually we should have some guidance. What are you fucking looking at? I'm just making sure everything's good. All right, cool, cool. Good, I have no idea if this is even working, by the way. No idea if that's recording. I'm assuming it is because every time we play, things happen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it's not recording there, we'll have it that way. Right, right. Well, that's a little bit more. Not, I intended for that to not record, <laughs> so we can just record a song if we feel like being spicy. Yeah. I'm Dylan, uh, musician extraordinaire. I'm Austin, musician extraordinaire. <laughs> Sorry, not professional really. musician extraordinaire. Uh, amateur musician extraordinaire because I don't. <laughs> very, have very professional musician. More. I am a more professional extraordinaire. <laughs> anyway, we make a lot of content. This is hopefully Theseus Live. This is to make our normal band stuff sound better. I think my dog is whining because it's upset because it pissed on my bed. Right before we were going to record. Right before. Right before. I hear the laundry going. I hear the vacuums. I hear everything. Yeah, it has to happen. It's like it's a time thing. You have to get to it quickly. There's no getting around it. We always have these instances of right before we record, something happens. I think that was today's. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but this is the first time we're doing this. Uh, the very first time, other than the yesterday, that was the <laughs> tester day. Tester day, yeah. So let's talk about some stuff. What did you do recently? Uh, musically or just in general? Musically first, since it's we're holding instruments. <laughs> well, musically, I took a job for eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that has, that absolutely relates. Unfortunately, <laughs> everything relates in this particular sense. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I do have a show with a Nashville artist uh, doing a little bit more work than I intended. Guy needed a drummer, and now he's got someone building his backtracks, learning his songs that he's switching up and all that. Someone. Stuff. Yeah, someone. It's not you. <laughs> Uh, me, obviously. Because he <laughs> thinks it's you. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's you as though and as though that, that work is free. <laughs> no. Why would that be free? You're there to play drums, not to set up his show. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, a, a little kind of blindsided by it, but it's all good. All good. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the guy's got a cool, he's got the cool, he's got cool songs. Like, I, I do actually like them. I think he just scheduled too early, really. Yeah. Scheduled way too early, needed to at least know what backtracks were. It, yeah, he If not knowing what backtracks were, like, have enough musicians to play all the music live. See, I expected to go in on his dime, like, play the show on his laptop, running through his system kind of deal. Uh, that was not the case. Oh, yeah? What happened? What's happening? What is going to happen? I had two happen? different producers sending me, like, seven or eight songs worth of stems, and I have to put them and make a whole backtrack file myself. And I'm the only one that can hear them, and there's two acoustic songs. So I'm just going to be like... I did notice that when I heard those songs. <laughs> I was like, huh. Man, because they still have sub bass and all that job stuff. Job is easy. <laughs> yeah, like they still had bass and like sub and all that stuff. So it's like there has to be someone keeping them on time because they don't have any ears unless someone can borrow a set from whoever. But it ain't gonna be for me because I don't have any. Yeah, that's uh, that'd be a problem. You know what we should have done? What we should have gotten stands. I have stands for these microphones. So we could just talk and hold our instrument and you could just, but it does kind of keep it out of your hands so you don't fiddle. Yeah. Because I feel like you would fiddle. <laughs> oh, I definitely fiddle, yes. <laughs> I'm a drummer sitting on a drum set. Of course I'm going to fiddle. I know, but it's like, I, I do feel like it could just be so much easier to just be like, okay, and also, but will it be harder for us to stay attentive Absolutely. The biggest problem is the fact that we're distracted by the instrument. So yeah. this might actually be good. Yeah, I think this is better. Because it's like uh, there's there's no in-between. There's literally just talking and playing. It's either just it's just talking or playing. Yeah. Yep. But uh, other than that, do you have any shows lately? I got one Sunday, one May 18th with Bad Omens of Wage War. 
Very excited for that one. And then uh, we have a tour in the works. July. Did Very you just play a show? I uh, just played a show with my band Cruel Queen. Tell us about that. <laughs> uh, besides having the Louisville lineup of all stars watching me drum. Somebody <laughs> wants. <laughs> besides that, it went well. Louisville but, lineup of all stars. And those yeah. names are. We have uh, Cody Ash. Oh, Jelly Roll. Yeah, Jelly Roll's we, drummer. We Jelly Roll. We got uh, uh, Kevin from Knock Loose. He was watching. Kevin Kane. Mild drummer. Uh, Garrett. From you were his Real replacement. Warfare was there. What? You were his replacement. Yep. I replaced Cody Ash and I replaced Kevin <laughs> oh, in you the band. did. I forgot about <laughs> Cody. <laughs> I took anyway, Acres for Eyes for Cody and then... Did uh well I guess would you say let down would I have taken let down from Cody? Is Cody was No, he he it was a one show deal. He was working for Jelly Roll already. Yeah. But No, you didn't take take that from Cody. <laughs> he though he probably likes the music and like supports Blake and everything like that, I assume that was not a long term thing. Oh, for sure. He was with Jelly Roll. No, I shouldn't say he didn't give a shit. He wanted to play the show because he did. Yeah. For that money. For the money, <laughs> he get he got paid twice what you got paid. No, nah, well, I know what he got paid for that show. I do too. What is it? Is it three hundred? It's five. He's the drummer for Jelly Roll. He got paid five hundred. Ah, uh, I think he did it for three. Unless he was a good friend. I mean, that's that is what I heard. I'm pretty well. Then we must have heard different things. But you'd know more than I would, honestly. So I'd take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. Besides having. A whole bunch of crazy Louisville drummers watching me. And uh, the drummer that, for the drummer singer for Guerrilla Warfare, which everyone loves Guerrilla Warfare. They're also independent. And they yeah, have a song that has right over a well, million streams. They were on the three 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 records. Right, but that, that fell through. They're not on there anymore. Yeah. And their song that took off is actually independent. Yeah. Surprisingly. Because it says Gorilla f- <laughs> their fucking their company name says Gorilla Warf- Gorilla Warfare Warfare <laughs> Get Worldwide. It. Yeah. Well, I was trying to think of war war <laughs> I can't <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla Warfare Worldwide. That's the name of their company, if you look at the credits. Mm. I've never had a show where, or at least it's been a long time, I've never had a show where I've literally just stare straight. If I'm like, if I'm looking up, I'm looking straight ahead at the crowd. If I'm looking down, I'm looking down at my kit. And I just see like this lineup of all-stars over here, just like all trying to get into it and shit like that. And I'm just like, oh my God, don't look. Don't look or you're going to throw a stick. I know it's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, it was terrifying. I haven't been that scared for a show in a while. That's crazy. Just because very special people were watching him. Everybody supports Austin. <sighs> Everyone. Of course. Because he does everything under the sun. Of course. He's got, he's got three businesses, and he started one with me. And I think uh, yeah. he's really looking forward to ours being the most profitable of all of them. Well, yeah, that's the the most profitable looking one. For sure. For I think sure. We made more money in our first four sales than I have from either of my other <laughs> LLCs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was eight sales and I, then not only that everything on the uh the ebay account no okay here's here's the thing with cruel queen we have an llc but all the money goes back into it i swear to god we would the only money i've ever gotten out of it is we used the band fund to pay for pizza after <laughs> practice <laughs> so it was a write-off <laughs> yeah. that's awesome we would just go and get like delivery for like 70 bucks and just pig out after practice <laughs> that's awesome you should do that every week. That's the only time I've ever touched any of that Cruel Queen money. Wow. Since this is more about Austin today, and we're just kind of jamming, uh, you had a band called Acquainted Strangers. Yep. And great band. Saw them live several times. Did photos and video for them a little, uh, a little bit here and there. Uh, nice guys, all of them. Very, very cool guys. All of them, yes. Unfortunately, uh, they fell through. But it's not because they couldn't do it. I think there was a little bit of a disorganization that was going on. Yeah. And the band is cool. Like, if you wanted to play a band, play, play in a jam band, where you were kind of expecting to stay local, they were perfect. They weren't putting out things quite as fast as they needed to. Yeah. And keep the quality that they had on the first record. They were putting out a second record, and it just was not, it was not as solid as the first one. I agree with that one. I think that's what initially kind of 
not drew me away from it because I was still always there, but I I didn't like the choice of uh, where we went to record. <clears throat> I can understand Cause, that. Because I don't, like, I understand they want it to feel like a live album, but, like, whatever your first album sounds as good as it does, and then you do that, it just sounds like we're putting out demos after, like, an official release. Right. It was a session. It was more of a session recording. And the session recording was as good as probably you could get without spending a ridiculous amount of money. And it it was good, but it needed to be, it needed to follow up like kind of the way Blake did reimagine, you know, yeah, uh, his reimagining of crying in the shower to where it's, you still release singles of a different album, but oh, here's this other album that's also a session album. Yeah. It needed to be done kind of like that. At least I think so. And I know I know that like costs and time and, and like satisfying everybody is a big part of it, but man, there's so many people to satisfy and to, to like say like what is what sounds good. I think this sounds good or this sounds good and this sounds bad and this sounds bad and there's a lot of conflict conflicting ideas. I think a band can get too big. Like you can have too many members. Yeah. And that is partially the reason why it's just me and him when it comes to all the things that we do. I, the only time I've ever wanted to bring someone in is to hire a guitarist in case I wanted to like just sing. Yeah. But that would be it. I, I really legitimately don't want anyone to be go, pretty much go further than me and him because it is so easy to make decisions. Very easy. It's extremely easy <clears throat> to make decisions. It's yes or no. Both of you talk about it and it's over. Like, I could not imagine polygamy. <laughs> 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 yeah, I want to go more into the the acquainted side of stuff. Yeah, good. <clears throat> so this band, uh, we, I stopped playing with them as much. Not because I wanted to stop playing with them. I wanted to play every single show that I could do with them, but they got upset at me taking the uh, taking the, the letdown gig. Which I don't know why. Why would you like? Realistically, if someone wants to be a professional musician, a professional musician, you all like every one of them. For some reason, loyalty is a big thing, which yeah. I get. I do get it because, like, when I was a kid, I also saw that. Now that I'm a little bit older, I'm like, oh, screw that. Just go play. Yeah. Everyone, if you want to do this, go play. See, I feel like some of it comes from, uh, like, kind of like a selfish place because, like, I've had it, I've done it before where. You'll play with one person, like you'll be their original member or whatnot. You'll play with them for however long. And then what if that person joins a band that's bigger than yours? You're like almost despising that person because you're like, man, why is that not me? Like, why are, why are you there? Why am I not? Right. And not only that, most of the time, I would say most of the time when this is all happening, you're kids most of the time, right? Yeah. Most kids, that most people that play in a band are kids or early 30s like me uh and then like you would jam the rest of your life kind of not expecting to really get anywhere you're just enjoying music yeah <clears throat> i do get the jealousy thing but it's one of those things where it's like you can't hold someone back you know yeah you should not hold someone back from becoming getting better and better and going to a bigger and bigger band because i mean that's what dom did yeah. dom got into letdown and i'm not saying like they were jealous or anything like I think uh, that's just personal experience for me, but I feel like their side of it was uh, they couldn't trust me to play a show anymore and didn't want to put faith in that. But the thing was is you were playing a lot more at the time. You yeah. were playing a lot of shows at the time. Like There was time where you were gone for like two months. Yeah. Which I wish Letdown would play more shows this year. I know. Jeez, <laughs> like you should be playing some, maybe not right now, it's cold. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's the whole album rotation period. Absolutely. Like so. it's in between, so you can't really, it's hard to promote something that's not there yet. You could do singles, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't think well, there's enough music yet. Hate Myself comes out the 23rd. Uh, that music video comes out the 23rd, I believe. And uh, yeah, I think after that is when they're kind of testing the waters for this album. See what it's going to do. It'd be pretty awesome. I'm excited to hear it, honestly. Uh, I have no idea. Just that one song, man. That one song that I like. God, like a that song yep. is so good. It needs to... 
every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh man, this chorus is just perfect. Do I think the whole song's perfect? I don't. I think the intro, the verse intro could be better. I think it's great. I don't mm-hmm. think there's anything wrong with it. I just think it could be a little bit better. Yeah. But God, that dude, that hook is so good. I'm just like, God, I want to write this song. I wanted to write this song. <laughs> it's so good. Either way, other than acquainted, like having problems eventually they could not find a drummer that was probably the biggest problem and i told them if i could like if i'm home and i could play a show i'll play a show like right but like, right when they wanted to play the shows the most pretty much is when you were gone the most it's like well you're playing more shows than that yeah. so they have to work and it's a part of your income like they're not paying you you know they're not trying to it's not only that they're not trying they are trying to get somewhere with it i know they were because they're you know they're all good guys and they want to make something they work hard on make yeah. something of it i just think it could have been a lot more professional because we we spent a lot of wasted time not doing things that we should have been doing like uh um uh, playing shows we were doing a lot of but like in louisville but stuff where it's like oh we need to record an album cool uh what songs do we want to do takes two weeks to figure out what songs we want to do and Why? it's like, okay where do we go four months later we're like okay let's Let's really figure out where we need to go. The problem is two is that, more months later. I, I, that's the thing is I think there was t- like it was too. It should have been looked at differently because it could have stayed together. That's the yeah. thing. It should have just been looked at differently to where it's like okay, we're want we want to play music and we want to jam. Like that's all we really want to do. If they want to take it to a professional sense, like they're not, they're not being quick enough in my yeah. opinion. They're not being consistent and quick enough <clears throat> to be able to do it. <clears throat> At our age now, it's either do you want to move on with your life or do you really want to make sacrifices for music? Because now it's like it is the time of sacrifices. Like Right now is like the the most, and this is totally purely financial. I was actually just reading. I, I watch videos on finances a lot, especially within the, like, the last month and a half. It's all I do is watch videos on finance. And it says in your 20s to your 30s. Your, tw- your entire 20s is the most potential growth you can possibly have for earnings on uh, like 401ks. Yeah. And if you're giving that up for music, it has to be, you have to be somewhere already. Like it's like you're, you're somewhere and it might not be exactly where you want to be, but you are somewhere to where you can at least have a reason for not having it. But it gives you the freedom to have uh a business and I think yeah. the business that we are making is definitely going to subsidize not having that type of job or that oh, 401k now I will say that your income when it gets to a point where you can survive efficiently uh, you definitely need to like throw 20% into a 401k from the moment it starts to really take off 20 percent's a lot i understand that <laughs> like nah, i just gotta have a will prepared before 65 buddy <laughs> <laughs> i just don't want to see you in a home <laughs> oh, i won't be in a home i'll be dead <laughs> a funeral home <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like uh i'm i've got roughly fifty five thousand in my 401k yeah so that's a lot. I have a lot in there. And you had that Dillard's money, which is like great. It was which, really great. I don't even know what my actual 401k money is. I literally just have Dillard's stock money. You'd be surprised how much is probably in there. Oh, I'm sure it's probably. In- if you had 10K, I'd be surprised. If you had above 10,000, I'd be surprised. Uh, whenever I left Meyer, whenever I worked there, I think uh, I accidentally selected an option to pay out my 401k. But it was oh. only like 400 bucks at the time. Oh, well, then, yeah. Yeah. That was a waste. But, uh, I did that with uh, $1,500 from Millennium Trust. I went to a place called Compass Airlines and worked there, and they just put it in a money market, so it wasn't growing. Yeah. Not at all. Like, literally at all. It was just $1,500 sitting. So I just told them, pay it out to me. I need it. And then, I don't even know if... Never mind. I'm not going to say that. I'm not incriminating myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know where you're going. You know what I was going for? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Anyways... Uh, <laughs> As far as acquainted, their songs are really good. I do like their songs a lot. Uh, Andy's got a great voice. Fucking Kyle's a great keyboard player. He's, I think he's a great singer, too. He needs more work, but he's got a cool voice. A lot of yeah. people really like his voice. Some people don't like his voice. It, it's, it is what it is on that. Uh, uh, the bass player. Ian. Ian, yeah. Ian. Ian's great. Ian, funny dude. Killer bass player. Very entertaining to watch. Great dude. 
Uh, he introduces himself to people that are <laughs> in a way that is disturbing, but almost relaxing. He talks a lot. Yes. Man, he talks a lot. And then, uh, like, he'd be great for a podcast because he would just take over. Oh, he would. I <laughs> he's remember... no filter, so he'd be canceled quick. <laughs> Got it. I remember um, uh, Henry Winkler. We did. We played a news show in the morning once, and Henry Winkler was like one of the special guests. And he goes up to Henry and he's just like, "Hey, I got an investment opportunity. I want to make like Uber, but with helicopters." <laughs> <laughs> he just went straight up to Henry Winkler and said that. And I'm just like, "Oh my god!" He had everyone dying laughing, and we just that was one of the funniest things I still remember. But he also had some moments too where. Some of these shows, come on, Ian. You know you did wrong. He got in a fight with one of his friends and throwing a bottle at him in the street. Uh, there was another one. So where... he's just an extreme person. That's yeah, he's okay. he's an extreme person. That's okay. You can be an extreme person. It's he's just that if you person. know how to deal with it, and if you're trying to butt heads with him, it's probably a bad idea unless you can fight yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but we love Ian. We love Ian. Love the guy. He's funny <laughs> as fuck. Uh, met his wife. She was cool. Uh and then who who else? John. John. <laughs> Hi, John. Man, the most forgettable. <laughs> I'm just kidding, John. I love you, dude. <laughs> the most forgettable. John's great. Uh, still loves to play music. I uh, love the dude. Uh, so, something about John. He's a great guy. Good guitarist. Drums. Can't seem to keep any instruments that he owns. Oh, that's the worst. I've stopped tell talking me. to him about yeah, it. Tell, tell me about that so he can uh, <laughs> understand. Maybe I'll just stop texting you. This, this dude will literally come up to you and say, hey, I I bought a drum set. I Do you want to come see it? Like, it's really cool. It sounds good. It's a good drum set. Two weeks later, he's like, man, I don't know if I need a drum set that's that good. I'm just going to sell it and buy a cheaper drum set. Sells it. Buys a cheaper drum set. Oh, look at this pack of cymbals. I got them for really cheap. They're really good. Really good cymbals. And then he's like, ah, oh, I don't think I need cymbals that are this good. I'm going to sell and make some money and buy some cheaper cymbals. But you lost money that way. He keeps doing it. Constantly. <laughs> Constantly. He sends me a message. He sent me a message like two days ago. Said he sold his drum set. I didn't reply. I left him on red. <laughs> Dude, I, I get it. I understand that trying to find your instrument, right? Trying to find like the one that fits you. Personally drums are drums i think that dw drums probably are the best made hand like pretty hands down they're probably the best made that's just because of me i've inspired that decision it is very true because <laughs> beforehand i've never played dw drums and i i thought because i played like the lowest bass kit they ever had initially when i first started playing music i thought they were cheap no their base, base, base kit like whatever the smallest cheapest one you can get is is the one that i played and i was like man this thing is but apparently it's like that's an introductory drum set yeah and then i played a couple other drum sets and i was like they're all relatively good but man for some some reason the tone the tones and like the certain volumes that those dw kits can get to are crazy I they just sound so good their bass drums sound so great and their snare drums sound so great i just take pride in a company that like doesn't want you <laughs> <laughs> I feel it, man. Ernie Ball doesn't want me either. <laughs> it's funny. I saw a sauce book and post the other day, and they had Ernie Ball tag because I know they're endorsed by him. And I'm like, you fucks. <laughs> I should have stayed at that band just for that endorsement. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. So this is a different, this is a totally different side tangent to everything. We're talking about his endorsement to that. I refuse to get the Ernie Ball Kaizen guitar because I will get sponsored and get that guitar for free. I want it so bad. It's four grand. It kind of just came out last year, the year before. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Tosin Abasi, uh, his he's got his own guitar, Abasi guitars, and he did a collaboration with Ernie Ball, and it's an amazing guitar. That guitar is awesome. It's so sick. It's the only part that kind of sucks about it is the fact that the tremolo on the back you can't pull up. It's a flat. It's flush, but that's fine. If you if you don't want to go high, you can always dive, yeah. right? And then, but the way that the guitar is shaped looking this direction is wild not only that all these knobs are on the back and they're all locks like they're so cool because it makes it look really 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 sleek yeah but it still looks like a full guitar 
And not only that, I think it, it's clearly very ins- aspired, inspired by uh, his Abbasi guitars because it's the same shape. It's just cut down. It's like, okay, we have your guitar, but we're going to make it our kind of like collaboration guitar to where it's thinner. I think it's a little bit more manageable because the Abbasi guitars are designed to be like super ergonomic, mm-hmm. extremely. Like they are meant to be played. And I don't know if he's really, really researched into how the tone was made on that guitar. But it is clearly made to like not look the best, but but play the best. Yeah. Uh, as far as Ernie Ball, they want it to look good so they can get sales. So I think what they did was perfect. Their collaboration on that guitar is amazing. And then not only that, it's a, it's a lot like a Majesty. It's a lot like a Majesty. It has, I think, almost all the same stuff. It we'll has have to the, go to Guitar Center and go get video of it. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy. I'll buy it. <laughs> But that's my my goal. I refuse to buy the guitar until I get sponsored by Ernie Ball. And the only way to do that is to make enough music and like to have some kind of influence in the music scene. Yeah. So we're trying to also do like a review, like review stuffs, like review stuffs, reviews for plugins, instruments, and stuff like that to let people know what we think about them. And one that we have, or at least that you're set up with right now, is uh, the Neural DSP. Gojira. Gojira is what I got Gojira. right now. I also have Tim Henson. That's a sick one. I do have the Tim one. I love the Tim Henson one. It's, it's great, dude. So the good. clean tones are awesome. He uses a lot of uh, chorus, at least in that. You want to know what's really cool about having that one with uh, those majesties? Whenever you turn on the uh, piezo pickup, oh, it sounds so cool. Piezo pickups it's, are cool. It sounds like a nylon guitar. A nylon string, like an acoustic. Like yeah, it's like, a, it's a, the perfect, in my opinion, it is the perfect setup if you wanted to play on the street. Yeah, like you can have all of it, and you, and yeah, if you want to bring your four thousand four thousand dollar guitar on the streets, I mean, I would. Play. I'm not gonna lie, this the where is it? My Les Paul has the most wear I have on any guitar, like yeah. of me actually playing the shit out of it. But I I I love that guitar, and I would love to just bring it. Out. I want it, I want personally, I want guitars to get fucked up. Yeah. Not extremely fucked up to where there's like gouges and shit, but like to where there's obvious wear. And the only reason I say that is because I think Gibson is trying to even the field on like they're missed. It's almost like they missed out on the used market. So they're making new guitars that are pre-worn, but they're pre-worn to they're pre-worn so well that they don't look fake. They look like they're real worn. I don't know what the hell they do (laughs) to make this magic happen, but it looks ridiculous like they look really real worn hmm. and they probably are like i've seen I think some... i've seen a few but i haven't looked into it that deep next time we go to mom's music we'll go to their custom shop in the back and uh back there they have those pre-worn guitars where they look just crazy they yeah. look insane like the paint so the paint is there's like a clear coat over top of this guitar and there's paint under it and then there's like a probably a base coat right under that right somehow they've managed on one of their les pauls to crack the paint just all over, basically spider webbing on a yeah. le, on a Gibson Les Paul, and then they clear coat it over top of that, so it looks like it's been sitting for like 40, 50 years. Huh? It is wild looking, and I have no. I, I'm assuming they did something to it to where it could do that. I don't know what they do. I've seen I've seen some custom stop, shop stuff to where they'll take like chains and literally hit it with chains, like over and over and over until it starts to get a certain amount of wear. What the hell? How do you not extremely dent it with that? It, it, they don't whack it. They just like like drop it on it and pull it off. They don't whack it. They don't whack it. You know what I mean? As far as uh, acquainted, man, they're all great guys. We love you. I do think that you guys were a jam band. You could have gone farther, but looking at it from like a business perspective, you have to have a look. Like there has to be a look in the band, like somewhat – synchronous look in the band and i think what you guys were going for was good it was a little too relaxed yeah but you know it's whatever's fun for you i think that you know what uh what's his uh ian in his like his five string bass was a little more metal than it should be yeah but i loved it it was such a cool ass bass it was cool i love that bass i can't knock that one but Probably still paying the, for it. <laughs> probably. The sound of the band, incredible. You guys had an incredible live sound. I, I, I think it was very much like, as far as the gener- like the genre, which what was the genre? It was uh, just kind of like pop like rock. Indie. indie rock? Yeah. 
At least that's what I always said it was. Indie kind of rock. Uh, it was really, really good. It was you guys' live show was great. It was really I had, great. I pride myself a lot on some of those drum parts because there's a a lot of like songs that I did love playing. Uh, a lot of really cool parts, a lot of interesting parts. Not really the same, like, 2-4 over anything. No, no. Seemed it like, was, I mean, they tried to hire a drummer who was like, I can't do any of that. Yeah, and I'm like, what? <laughs> they he's had like, someone the come stuff. over, and he's like, I can't really play these that well. It's like, what? They're easy songs. They're just a little weird, but. I will say, right before Acquainted decided to call it quits, they did invite me to uh, be their guitarist. I don't know if you knew that. No. They invited me to be their guitarist, and John was going to take over drums. Ah, uh, okay, it's not yeah. that I didn't want to. It's just that I think, dude, there's too. I have too much going on. Like, there's just, I, I, there, I have to make focus on one thing and really go at it. And I, I have the one thing. I feel like I heard John talk about that. At least I know I heard John talk about him possibly taking over drums, but I don't think I knew that they asked you. Yeah, he was just like, I need someone to fill in guitar, but I, I don't know. It, it's not that I didn't appreciate it. I really did. It's that there, I I have to focus on what we do yeah. more because there's like a lot that we do. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of things. First of all, this was a new thing that we were just kind of like, I wonder if it's possible and I wanted to do it. So that was me. <laughs> but it's like music. We haven't written music because we've been focused on the other business yeah. a lot. A lot. Like... Other businesses taken, like, my whole mindset of, like, everything going on right now, like, it's changed what is, like, the most important at the moment. Like, obviously, whenever we get that rolling, we're going to go back to music and start writing a lot more, get some more songs out and stuff like that, but... Right, and then not only that, right when we started this business, right when we started it... TikTok! TikTok exploded on us. So it was like a no choice. We have All to. All over us. Gay. It's gay. <laughs> I don't want TikTok to do anything all over me. <laughs> hey, you said it. You're gross. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the. <laughs> 34 million views almost, I think, in the last two months. God. Yeah. So TikTok decided to explode all over us as a quote unquote of Austin Armstrong. <laughs> Don't quote me quoting him. All over us and inside us. Uh, anyway. See, it's coming out. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to come back out. No, it's uh, it, it was fun. it is wild. It's wild because we had what what was the first video that was really like, whoa, we got like 20 or 30,000 views. <sighs> I don't even it was just remember. a hunting video because yeah. we would usually get roughly 5,000 views. <laughs> uh, Less than that. I mean, it was like 300 and then it, yeah, it shot we were up to 500. It shot up to 5,000. It was the first one was uh, like five-ish thousand. Yeah. I should have to post one in the next 40 minutes. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But it could be a little late. As long as they're daily, I'm fine with that. Right, absolutely. And roughly around the same time. <clears throat> yeah. Roughly. I mean, it, like the latest, I would think, is like two or three. But we have a video right now that's at like, what, 9.2 million almost? 9.2 million viewers have checked into us. 350K likes on it that's insane 350,000 and we didn't ask we didn't ask to subscribe or follow that's our I wouldn't say that's our downfall but that's something that we have not done that apparently we need to do a lot more oh if we would have done it on that video god we I mean we have 30,000 roughly 30,000 followers on yeah. TikTok and we have 1,400 like subscribers on YouTube now on our Theseus Live stuff now where this this right here goes I don't know. It could go between music and live. Yeah. It doesn't really matter either way, but it's, it, I don't know. That's a lot. Cause we went, we asked three times, four times maybe to follow and subscribe. Yeah. Something like that. Jumped up like 400. The first day <laughs> was like, like 130. One post with like our first time asking for it. And then we got like 130, 140 that day. That, that was just... the day that we hit the thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were at the movie theaters watching the new Godzilla movie, and it's just like, hey, look, look, a thousand, a thousand two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The first thousand subs took us took us like six years to do. <laughs> it took a long time, and I shouldn't say that we're like. I, 
I see what YouTube and everything wants. It wants you to have a niche, like a very specific niche. And then not only do you have to have a niche, you have to have something that appeals to a broad audience, is repeatable, and no one something that no one's really doing. Yeah. And that's kind of what we got. Did we intend for that to happen? No. No way. Like, not even close. Dude, sometimes we feel like we want to, like, just give up on everything before we load that hunting game again. Maybe some days, but... <laughs> 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 some days. Yesterday was great. <clears throat> Yesterday we had actually a really good episode, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of shots, because call, the hunter call of the wild is hard. It's tough. They, It's like you can get between, like... Like 40 to 50 meters away from things and still not see them. And you just take one extra little step, they're gone. Yeah, they hear you, though. Yeah. Some of those things will flee from, like, 200 meters. And you have a dog in the game. Knocked loose. <laughs> Brian Garris. Yeah, yeah. Our our dog in our that farm. game's name is Brian Garris. I love it. Because he... He thought of the name, and it was great. It stuck. <laughs> we had to say yes to it immediately. Absolutely. So we've been uh, just making sure that he's doing good. He gets pets all the time. He gets pets all the time, yeah. He pets, tracks a lot blood. of blood. That's he metal. Does. He loves blood. He's a big <laughs> blood guy. <laughs> it's metal as hell. Good, metal as fuck. You're awesome, Brian. The TikTok exploded in a way that we just were not expecting. Because how many did... We got like five million, four or five million in one day. Yeah. We had one where we had four and a half million in one day. That's a lot. Four and a half million views in one day. And we do think that part of it, I, I thought of the fact that hunting season was coming up or it was currently hunting season. It was like November. It is February the next year now. Yeah. And uh, I was just like, ah, it's hunting season. And then we got that first like roughly 5,000 views. And then we were like, all right, well, we're going to start posting every day. Uh, we posted for like seven days straight and it was just like, what? There was a substantial jump in views, substantial jump yeah. in those first seven days. And then right when we were going to pull down, we were going to back off actually doing TikToks to focus on the business. Woo! <laughs> it just kept, it just freaking shot off. And then my phone, like reading comments or seeing likes or anything like that just became unrealistic. Like you just post the video and you just ignore TikTok the rest of the day. You can't, you almost can't like <clears throat> our favorite comment. Our very favorite one is what game? Because apparently I want to kill anyone. Apparently, <laughs> apparently hunting games are like popular, but they're also, it's like no one knows they exist, but everyone's played one. Yeah. Everybody's played a hunting game, but nobody knows that they, that it exists. So it's like, we're, we, that's our niche. We have, we're, the guys who play the hunting games. And I'll take it. I mean, if Cabela's wants to give me a few rifles, if they want to give me some camo Dude, I know. If they want to give me a four-wheeler. If they want to give me a, a flight to Omaha or something to go hunting, yeah, I'll promote it. It's going to be hilarious. It'd be <laughs> like, oh, uh, two, two YouTube gamers go hunting for the... Two YouTube hunting gamers go hunting for the first time and, uh, what is it, uh, field dress their first deer. Yeah. Uh. My dad used to always do that for me, but I I do think like if it if we did end up getting some kind of endorsement sponsorship, which we have been kind of we've gotten a few offers with like Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops. God, I would love for it to be like take me and my dad and you to like just a a hunting trip, like a remote hunting trip. Dude, I, I want to take out. I some want it elk. to be us, but I feel like my dad would. He has to go. He's required have to. to go. He's required to go. He would be pissed. He's he's been wanting to hunt out of Kentucky for like the last ten years. He always talks about like, yeah, one of my Marine Corps friends has land down in Texas, and I want to go hunt. He just never able to do it. Right. No, I feel that. Uh, that so that happened. So you've so we've gone over a lot, kind of. We've not really talked about me. We've talked more about your bands, and we haven't played any instrument. <laughs> That's fine. This is also kind of a podcast. That's yeah. totally fine. Uh, it's like, but we were in, the reason why we know each other, which is kind of what I wanted to talk about from the beginning, like how yeah. we know each other. Uh, so I don't know how this is going to be cut. This is probably going to be one long thing. We're forty two minutes in. Which is awesome. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Uh, but the reason why we know each other is because I met Austin at a Hooters. Met Hell you, yeah. Met you at a Hooters. <laughs> met you at a Hooters. Uh, Mason was there, and we were with it was, uh, it was all of 
Angus, Angus Rise. Rise. I remember was, that day very much. And it was, I think it was all, it was me and Justin. Yeah. Because I was, you know, I was hanging out with Justin like all the fucking time then. That was the day that uh, Mason and I, like, we paid for our food and she's like, oh, you look like a Mason Osborne. Oh, and you look like an Austin Armstrong. Oh my God. And we were just like, <laughs> fat zero. Go got up away. <laughs> Go away. That, I remember it. The, uh, anyways, yeah, so I was in a band. I don't remember if it was Illustrator yet. Uh, I have no idea. I was in Anchors at that time. So. You were in Anchors at that time, and uh, I think Illustrator was looking for a drummer because I met you, and we, like, pulled you away. Yeah, but that was... <laughs> Not I really. I don't know how long from that Hooters uh, restaurant time to see I don't exactly the, remember the firework time the fireworks was the big thing because what, what happened was we met at Hooters and then we all had a plan to go basically light off fireworks in the middle of a road in a the in some backwoods Inside area of a bridge yeah on a on an overpass bridge that was over like a river a little tiny thing and we just lit off fireworks that shit was cr- it was so fun that, that was, was so that was fun I am night. amazed no one got hurt and then uh, a girl got stuck in the fucking grass when she was trying to leave and we had to push her out. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle's ex at the yeah. time uh, was trying to like go home after everything had lit off. Like we were lighting off fireworks like mortars, lighting them off in our hands and then just chucking them and then walking away because we thought we were cool. <laughs> really, we were the just photos <laughs> of us walking away in a big explosion behind just us. Just so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Stupidest stuff you ever heard. And then we had like one extra mortar at the very kind of end of it. So that was like the big thing that we did. And we just kind of lit off like a little bit of fireworks. But the other thing was we took a mortar, lit it, and then threw it into the water under us. And it exploded in the water. It was so cool. That was like less cool than I thought it was going to be. But it was still cool. I think just doing dangerous things with fireworks is my forte. I'm so surprised we didn't lose any. Like all of us are musicians and need our hands. Oh, very much. And we didn't lose our hands at all. I was, I was shocking, honestly. Uh, but I let you drive my car. I had a m- white Mustang at the time. You didn't have his glasses. I didn't have my glasses that <laughs> night, so I couldn't. I could not drive at night in this back road that I'd never seen. The headlights on the Mustang were not great, so I just couldn't see. I was like, "Hey, can you drive my car?" And then we listened to a song. This is when I knew we were friends. We listened to a song called "Lucid Dream" by uh, Black Mill. Listen to that song, and we wrote, we literally improved a song about some guy pissing his pants. <laughs> Dude, that was like 10 years ago. Yes, it was. It was so long ago. I, I saw, um, I got a, a memory on my Facebook. One of, uh, I took a picture of us practicing in your garage, and it was nine years ago. Dude, I know, I saw that. That was, God, that was so long ago. But yeah, we made a, a song about some dude pissing, and, uh, I don't remember how it goes, obviously, 10 years ago. Dude, it was so funny, though, at the time. <laughs> I, I remember, remember us laughing either. our ass off. Yeah, it was just like at the very end, we were like just laughing super hard. I don't remember at what time. Basically, I was trying to say, hey, man, we're trying to play. Like, let's go play music. Yeah, the whole oh. entire time I'm driving his car. So, hey, man, be in our band. We need a drummer. Be in our band. Hey, you want to be in our band? I do. I kept on. Come it. on, be in our band. But I knew you were good. That was the thing. Because <laughs> me and me and Austin, or me and Austin, me and Justin at the time actually had really high standards. Yeah. Probably too high for being as young as we were. Well, yeah, y'all were writing weird ass shit. Exactly. You had to have the high standards. We had really like we had seven eight to a four four to a three four back to a six eight to right very very complicated stuff, and we needed someone who could like handle it. And then it's the same way with like having a singer. We had this one girl, uh, Melanie, which she sings still. She was the best singer that we had that was, like, young. She still sings, and she's, like, a, she's an acoustic guitar player that plays yeah. in, like, bars and stuff now. Amazing voice. She has a very cool voice. And we were like, yes, it's perfect. At the time, she had a drinking problem, and she had to quit. Ah. So it was unfortunate. So it was like, but she's good now, you know. But that, it's, yeah, a lot of complicated things happen. And then after Illustrator, so we, we, we're in a band called Illustrator for... Three years. Three or four years. Yeah. Uh, made one EP. Yeah. One EP. <laughs> one one EP, EP. And then actually I wrote the entire second EP. The whole thing. I wrote the whole thing in a week. I was fucking getting it. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I was feeling it. And it was complicated. Like the songs that I wrote were very different from each other. I don't know what was going on at the time, but I was just like, 
okay, I want to write something. And I yeah. wrote something very, very quickly. Uh, and then I, right after that, I started my, I got my uh, aircraft mechanics license. And I just had, I was stressed. I was stressing the fuck out. I, I just thought of the best story of those days. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't tell that story. I know, I know <laughs> you know what it's going to be. No, I know exactly what story you're talking about. <laughs> so one day, <laughs> you it's practice day. And uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I'm ready to go to practice. I'll go a little early. Go hang out, Dylan, whatever. And get to his house. Well, go up the steps. Can't find him. Hear the shower running. Okay, cool. He's taking a shower. I'll just <laughs> do whatever until then. So I'm sitting there on his bed. I don't remember if I was playing his guitar. Keep or in something. mind, I have a bedroom and a band room. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead. I don't know if I was playing his guitar or something. Uh, I just you're remember, just sitting on my bed. I think I was just sitting on your bed. All of a sudden, he just walks in, <laughs> butt ass naked, with no towel on, no nothing. I just go. <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, holy shit. Like, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I didn't see anything because I think I just saw the shock on his face. Dude, you closed your I've watched you close your eyes. You just went. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm sitting here minding my own business and I just see full naked Dylan walk in. <laughs> It's like, I just took a shower, bro. And it's like, you so saw you walking around the upstairs, like your parents' room's right there. Why are you butt ass and Dude, if I don't have a towel, I make a run for it. <laughs> All I got to do is look down the hallway. If there's no one there, I make a run for it. <laughs> That was the, that was what how it was, man. He just shows up and he goes, "Whoa, <laughs> what are you doing?" Good time, good time. That was the best story that ever happened from that. We oh played it. Oh my god, we played a few shows. We actually got to play at the Expo Center with the Devil Wears Prada. With the and Devil Wears Prada, Whitechapel. Uh, I don't know who else. I don't know either. My very first show, we played side stage. Uh, my very first show I ever played out side stage to woe is me and attack attack. Yeah. And then like a bunch of other big bands at the time, but it was just mainly woe is me. I was like, fuck. And I actually missed him. I didn't even see him. Anchors for eyes got to do a second stage, uh, at a August Burns red show. And I actually got Matt Griner to come watch us. Dude, he came up dope. on stage and like gave me a fist bump and said, awesome show and all that stuff. It's probably terrible. It's probably God awful, but he's still, he's still there. Yeah. He's got a fan forever because of it. Yeah, I, I took a drum lesson with him once too, I believe, on one of the warp tours. It's like thirty-five bucks to go. Dude, you to took a drum lesson with Cody Ash. Yeah, <laughs> that was way before any of his success. Right, right. So we got to play at Expo Center. I I played side stage. That was my very first show, dude. Our first show, our illustrator's first show, was the most dense show we've ever had because it was like too close to touch. His first show. Oh, I forgot about it that. It was secrets. We opened for Secrets. That was Illustrator, wasn't it? Yeah. That was when we had written just enough. Too close enough. to touch and Secrets, yeah. And, uh, dude, it was, like, packed for us. And yeah. it actually died a lot when we like when we came off. Yeah. And I, I was we surprised. we did bring a good amount of people that to show. Because, I mean, our... we had a bunch of tickets. Yeah, we did. We... <laughs> just giving you guys a heads up. If a kid comes up to you and tries to sell you tickets buy them because they're never going to remember first of all and they have no one else to go to go to the show <laughs> yeah because i had tickets and i was like i don't even know who to sell these to for some reason my brain didn't think to like try to sell people on the street or anything like that because i was like trying not to be rude and stuff but oh, we went straight to the line yeah oh yeah i remember uh for that august burns red show uh ricky literally just had like 20 tickets in his hand and all the people that were lined up waiting for doors to open he was just selling all the tickets to them. That's and awesome. And he came back and like sold twenty tickets in like ten minutes. That's awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. That's such a good. That's a great and idea. And then we got a lot of that money back. So it was just, sick. The only thing I can really, really remember Ricky from is Ricky's like an incredible screamer. He is a very, very good screamer. Uh, he did one song with us when Ben Schwab was in our band as well. Uh, when Illustrator was starting, we had a completely different sound. We were heavy as fuck. Yeah. Completely, completely different sound. And we scrapped the entire EP. Like, we had an EP, scrapped it, and then Ben left because he was like, well, this is clearly not going to... You, you guys want a sound that doesn't involve me, really? Yeah. So he was like, smart, in a smart way, left because it just that wasn't going that way. Yeah. <clears throat> but 
he screamed for us. But the big thing I remember Ricky from is apparently he has like incredible, incredible IBS. <laughs> <laughs> like explosive. In, in, like disgustingly, I can't tell you, just disgustingly explosive. I can't tell you how many photos I've had from him just sending photos <laughs> of his shit all over toilets. Just everywhere. Like he just can't control it. He told me about a story. He ran into a Walmart, couldn't get there in time. As his pants are going down, <laughs> he got it all over the wall, all over the back of the toilet. And he's like, dude, I just fucking left it. I'm pretty sure he told me he just left it. And I'm like, oh, my God. He sent a picture of it and, like, toilets just covered. Anyway, that that's what I mainly remember Ricky from. It was the worst thing I'd he ever He was not afraid about. to show those. But, yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> It's really weird because I the, the whole point of this somewhat podcast is to be able to like s- play music somewhat, write music, and get us in a headspace where we're just kind of relaxed while making something. Yeah. But this is a whole like introductory for podcast, sure. This is though. the introduction. Like I I was in a band called Illustrator before that. It was uh, beautifully broken, which was with Kevin Kane, and then before that it was Embry Square. Before that it was Without Morning. Before that it was uh, dis- all these that I don't know. Like all stuff that you've never heard of because we never played yeah. because we couldn't find enough members to play. <laughs> mm. And we were supposed to play. We were supposed to be the intro for the last, I think, Anchors for I show. And we had to drop because our drummer or our guitarist dropped. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, but it was like three, three or four days before. I was pissed. I was like, I want to play the show. <laughs> I got I got one more Ricky thing real quick. Before okay, I go ahead. There's. I've never seen anyone else do this in my life. This is one thing that he always tried to do that I hated it, but I always thought it was funny. (laughs) Whenever he would be driving, we're just driving down a road. If he sees an animal in the road, he'll just... (laughs) He steps on the gas and starts going for it every time. And I'm like, oh my God. I watched him just splatter a squirrel one day. Like... He's just in there driving, going like 50 down this 35, and then he sees a squirrel eating in the middle of the road, and he just punches it to like 70 and just, and just eliminates it. And I'm like, holy fuck, Ricky. Oh, my God. And I just see the squirrel just bouncing in the back. Oh, oh it's God. terrible. You but, know, the funny thing is, I'll tell you a story that this is a story that uh, Justin, who was my guitarist at the time, and uh, still one of my best friends, he... <laughs> He was coming to my house because he, like, that's where we had practice. Was my house. Yeah. We used to have practice at his house at one point. But uh, my pl- my house was practice day. He said, sometime during the night, he and he's in the back roads with like somewhat populated houses mm-hmm. and driving down the road, sees a kitty and tries to hit on the brakes and then <laughs> keeps going over it. And he said, <laughs> as he hit the cat, he just heard. <laughs> And he said he gets out of his car and he just has these kitty parts just Ugh. left out behind him. He said he cried. Yeah. He was like, this was a kitten. Like, it was a small kitten. And <sighs> just, oh, that was when it was. That, I would cry too, honestly. He said he cried that day. He was like, that was the worst thing that's ever happened to me that as far as mangling something that didn't need it. Yeah. It was awful. And that was when he, that's when he was in his Ford Focus. He has got the worst luck with cars. He well, had a. He doesn't take care of them. Also, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had a Honda Civic where the transmission straight up fell out while he was driving. Uh, the the, the transmission a... fell out while he was driving. <laughs> you know how hard that is to do. <laughs> there was there something about like his engine blew up because he never changed the oil or like. So he never, he's been doing that. Never got it serviced. It's not even that. He has almost always done that, and he doesn't for some reason. He's got it now, but. Like, even recently, he had a car blow up that it was relatively new. And we're like, why? Yeah. He said he just changed the oil whenever. And I'm like, no, that's <laughs> not how that works. Yeah. You don't do that. That's how you destroy engines. So I think now he understands 5,000 miles at the latest is what I do. I mean, you can yeah. do 7,500 based on what the engine says. Like, it'll tell you, like, change <clears throat> the oil. But he was just changing the oil whenever. I was like, well, that's your fucking problem. Change your goddamn oil. <laughs> it's a hundred bucks and your car stays alive. You wouldn't have all these fucking car issues. But that, oh, I mean, Justin. he kept his Ford Focus for a long time. 
a long time. So he had his Honda Civic, the transmission fell out, and then his Ford Focus, he like ran into a <laughs> ran into a mailbox or not a mailbox with it. He ran into like a uh, my garbage can one time with it and just ripped off his <laughs> ripped off his mirror. Uh, it had a huge dent in the hood. It actually wasn't that bad. Uh, the car was great. He needed it for, you know, transporting his cab and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> but he has the worst luck with cars. Now he actually gets it. From a mechanic standpoint, change your goddamn oil. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I need to do right now. Like 7,500 miles is the latest. If you change it any later than that, if it comes out and it's water, it's really bad. Like your oh. car is fucked almost i mean it's not totally fucked because it's still going but it needs to come out still kind of thick thanks guys so much for watching this uh i am dylan that's austin yep and this is a podcast music thing that we didn't play any music on yeah this is the first one <laughs> i think that's gonna be the downside of having these because it's like we'll never have anything to edge us into playing the music unless we talk about it we have to meet well we, we were talking about backgrounds this particular time though like because yeah. we could talk about like oh do you, you know that one part by fucking Limp Biscuit?